How do you do? I'm Graham Murphy, Category Manager at Tech Rentals. Today we're just going to have a look at the uh, TSI Dust Track DRX, an aerosol monitor available for rent from Tech Rentals. All right, here is the kit as we supply it. We have the instrument itself, we've got uh, battery, power supply, uh, automatic zero filter, uh, and various accessories in here as you will need them comps, cables. Um, zero filter etc. Now when we supply the instrument the battery isn't in it so you either need to power it from AC mains or insert the battery. Okay the instrument um, here to insert the battery this is the um, where the filters survive etc and we've got the battery we install here we drop in so if we drop the battery in here now it's got the battery and it's a freestanding instrument. Now, the instrument has three modes of operation. There's manual mode, survey mode, and log mode. So we'll quickly go through the uh, manual mode and show you how to set that up, thanks. Okay, for manual mode, um, we firstly need to turn the instrument on. I've inserted the battery as before, you've seen before. Now here is a stylus in the instrument for doing the screen etc. So I'll turn the meter on. It's got to wait for a second for it while it boots. All right the instrument started. The first thing we need to do is do the um, zero, put the zero filter on. So start up and there's setup over here. Um, zero cal. Now attach the zero filter and press the start. Now to attach the filter we've got to remove this which is just a little filter that sits on there and attach this. Now we push start and now it'll do spend 60 seconds doing its zero calibration. This has to be done each time you use the instrument. Right, the zero filter calibration is complete. I'll now come over to run mode and I'm going to select from here. Well, sorry, there's, there's manual. Um, I'm actually going to do survey first. Now this will just take readings and not, um, and it won't, uh, it, it's not gonna log them, okay? So time constant, that's a smoothing constant, constant. So all we do, I'll just take the zero filter off and put this little, protective thing back on again come back to main and I hit start and start I had to hit there was a wait there we okay, go waiting for test here we go and now it's reading now you can um, it's not there's no no file being saved etc I think you can come over here if there was readings there we could actually graph them but um, we can select different um, the readings to be displayed here and uh, display all we can display just a subset so we just touch this button here and uh, if you want to see the total over there you just hit the select the total so now very simple to use so let's look at the other operational modes Okay, I hit stop. Right, finished with that. Now I'm going to come over here to run mode. Now, that was survey. Now I'm going to go to manual. Now in this mode, it will log and we have to tell how long the test is going to be. So if we're gonna leave this, so we select that. So where well, it's got seven days, that's seven days continuous. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna have a five minute test save and uh, the logging interval will be set to um, 30 seconds a bit, little bit unrealistic save time constant five seconds neither here nor there again if we come over to main now 
file, it'll save it to is manual 002. So if I hit start here, All right, again, we can change what are these displays are. You can see here's the countdown timer on how long to go. So every 30 seconds we'll get a reading. So out of this, we'll end up with 10 readings. And five minute test. Uh, any errors, by the way, with these are indicated by these turning red etc and this if you've set an alarm condition which we haven't here I'm gonna have a look at I think if we hit stats oh, we can change it different types of stats etc you can lock the display um, so people can't fiddle with it so we'll leave this um, and in five minutes I'll come back to you. Okay, it's just coming up on zero. Now it's completed. We can come over here and there is the data there. And um, well, I think I can go graph on that. Yeah, there are the readings. There aren't that many reading, etc. So that's how we do that. Now, Let's pretend we're now trying to set the instrument up and we want to log over a longer period of time. Now, um, you can get an external battery and an external case for putting this outside. Generally, this is the instrument as it stands is an internal instrument designed to run in a um, inside, uh, it's not waterproof, etc. Anyway, here we go. I'll go over to run mode. Let's have a look. Now, at the moment I've got these are the, this is where you program it up. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Now I can change this name here. So if I click on that, the log name, click on there and I could go backspace and call it um, test, uh, you know, uh, TR1. Save. Now the test is going to be, I'm going to do um, a one hour test and I'm going to do, this would typically, you'd do an eight hour test starting at 7 a.m. And in this instance, um, because I don't want to take days over it, I'm just going to do a one hour test and I'm going to do two of them, except um, I'll yeah, save that. Now the test into uh, the logging interval, I need to make to two minutes. Yep, happy about that. Um, now the number of tests, so I'll actually do two tests, save. Now, if I, the time between tests is how long it, it sleeps for. So typically, if you've got an eight hour day, or so let's pretend we're doing 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. testing, well, you'd leave it sleep for 12 hours before, so in other words, it would start at 7 a.m. each day. In this instance, I'm going to sleep it for 30 minutes Thirty minutes, save, and um, time constant is just a smoothing constant. Start date, it's going to be the um, start date at the moment is the it's the thirty first. So start date, yes, I'm going to do a start date, and it's the thirty first, which is correct. And the start time, yes, I'm going to start at not at nine a.m. I'm going to start it at um, it's, I'll start it at 13.45 um, oops, 13.45 45, save it now the other thing as we scroll down here is the fact I'm going to go I'm going to have an auto zero and there's auto zero interval default one there is every 15 minutes. Now one of the things about doing auto zero, it takes 60 seconds to do a zero. So the sample rate has to be 
uh, two minutes is the minimum sample rate. So in other words, because you've, you've got a, a one minute to do the, the zeroing every, um, every 15 minutes. So if I take this off here and I put my, here's my auto zero, I'll have to remove the, that connector from the top. Now I attach that there. So this is sitting on the, the um, uh, just have a look. There we go. That's right, it sits on there. And we need to power it, so I just have to plug this in, and it can only go one way. And it just takes a bit of, oh, hang on. There we go. Plug that in there. And just tighten that back up. Now, I'll put this little filter on top here. Okay, so we get every 15 minutes it's gonna do a zero cal. If you're doing a long-term test, this is useful to put on. This duration test one wouldn't normally do um, bother with it, but when you've got a multiple days, so you might have set this up for seven days, uh, starting at 7 a.m., finishing at 7 p.m. with 12 hours before it starts. So every day you would have a different log file called TR1001, etc. Now, once that's all been set up, I can go back to main and it does a, a logic check on what you've done and now it's all ready to go. I just need to hit start and it'll start logging. So I'm gonna go and put this outside and start logging. And when it's all finished, we'll have a look at what we've captured and also we'll have a look at how to download data from this instrument. Okay, the test's been running for a while now and you can see this is where we're up to 53 minutes out of an hour on the, this happens to be TR, this is the third hour, um, third test. So if we come back and have a look at um, our graph, there's a graph. Now we can change this to what we need. We can change the time to relative time in seconds or whatever. Um, you can turn around uh, have both either the average or the time weighted average. Okay, there they are there. I'll put the average back on, bang. So we've got a number of features here. Uh, I can lock the display, I won't do that at the moment. So you can see that when you hit these, you can change what you're showing, um, etc. So, and we'll leave this until it's finished and then go through downloading, thanks. Okay, it's later in the day and the test is now finished. Now, we can have a look at what's been stored. Now, um, you can see it does the sequential numbering. It adds that to the uh, particular test. I'd done an earlier one called test one. There was the manual one and here are the two tests that I programmed in. If I wanna have a look at this, I can actually click on that. Here's a summary, but I can also come back. There's a graph and we can have a look at different aspects of that graph. Um, etc. Now we'll go about uh, now downloading from the instrument and we'll have a look at what's involved in that. Okay I'll plug the USB cable in here and I'll plug that into the PC in a second when I've loaded the software. Now we've got to look through the package and you'll find the USB memory stick with the appropriate software on it so I need to install that etc. Okay, I've plugged the USB memory stick with the um, software into the PC. So I'll bring up the PC here and I'm just going to, there's the drive there and we're looking at the software directory. Here's our program we need to run. Ask me to log in as administrator, of course. And we log in and now it'll install. So it's going to install the software, but it also needs to install the drivers because we need to communicate with this device here. It asks whether we want to install a driver. Yes, we do. Now we can communicate with the instrument via an ethernet port if you wish install finish now it's there's the appropriate driver over there now i'm going to plug 
the Ethernet port from the inst uh, the USB port. So I'm sorry, from the instrument in, and it should connect quite happily, and it should run up. Now, I'll run up the Track Pro software. It's opened an, a second Ethernet port via the USB. That's why it's asking that. Now we instrument setup, communications. There it is. That's found the instrument test. Correct. And we close that. Now we can, um, under file here, we can receive the uh, files from the device and now it downloads there are all of our um, uh, we'll select all of them and we select there are all the little tests we've run there they are there close so now any of these you can um, get the summary data we can do graphs um, and have a look at say for example here um, this this one here and there's all of our graphs running up, etc. We can also export the data, uh, export test data, all of these, for example, as comma separated uh, data for subsequent opening, subsequently opening it with um, uh, uh, Excel, etc. Very easy to use. It's a great little instrument, dust track. Great if you're doing dust monitoring. Thank you very much.